What's going on everybody back again? Well, hey, it is January 2022. It feels weird to even say that, to be honest with you. I was writing something down today and I was like, 2022, that is so weird. So it's gonna take a minute to get used to it, but nevertheless, it is time for another fishing tip. You know, we've been doing those every single month and you guys have been loving them. The feedback's been awesome. So again, thank you so much for sharing all the videos out. You guys are awesome, Team SMC all the way. And do me a huge favor, if you like this uh, video here, this tip, be sure to share it out and subscribe and also drop a comment down below. And also, as I get into this tip, January fishing tips, uh, I want you to be thinking about some of your favorite techniques as well and I'd love to hear what they are. Uh, a lot of you have been dropping comments on your favorite lures for this particular month, favorite techniques, and that's really nice for other people to read and see kind of what's going on because, you know, I don't have all the answers. I live down here in South Florida, so I'm gonna give kind of an overview for the country. But that being said, overview of the country is cut a little short, wouldn't you agree? I think right now, I'd say over half the country is probably frozen. So if you're in Minnesota watching this, these techniques are probably not going to work real well right now. Uh, I do apologize. It's still pretty warm down here in Florida. So most of the stuff I'm going to be talking about is going to be safe for the Mason-Dixon line south. Uh, and we're going to get into that. So there's some really cool ways to catch fish this time of the year. Also, we have winners from last month's video. And all you have to do to win is drop a comment down below and let me know that you'd like to try out the mystery taco boxes. We're going to be giving away three more of these mystery tackle boxes. We've been doing that every month. We're gonna be announcing the winners at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. So let's get into the very first tip, January fishing. You know, there's lots of debates to choose from, obviously, guys. Um, you know, January, again, depending on where you are, right? Uh, I'm in South Florida right now. It is January 3rd. I'm in shorts, okay? If you're in Tennessee right now, you're probably in the thickest jacket you own. So there's a big giant difference, of course, of baits and what we're gonna be doing. So, you know, these baits, again, are gonna be more for the middle part of the country, your Alabama, your Tennessee, your Texas, stuff like that. Down here in Florida, you know, we could catch them on top waters right now, which is crazy. But, you know, there's several lures that I like in January. January is a time of the year, typically, that the water gets Probably it's coldest, okay? It's when the fish really set up deep. Uh, they're starting to feed on shad exclusively. Um, and, and they really look for warmth. You know, they're not within maybe a month or two or three from thinking about spawning. So, you know, you want to target, you know, channel swings. You want to target deep areas, brush piles and rocks. Rocks are a big deal in January because rocks hold heat. So those cold days, but yet it's sunny that those rocks absorb the heat, make the rocks a little warmer. It's kind of like a blanket, really. And those bass will get up around that, that bait will get up around that. So, the, you know, bridge, bridge embankments, uh, bridge pilings, rocky shorelines, things like that are things that I'm gonna key on in January if I'm not way out deep on those channel swings. But let's first dive into what I like to throw when I'm up fishing around those rocks. Well, mostly it's gonna be crankbaits, okay? I'm gonna throw a square bill crankbait like the one here we have here. It's a Guggen Squad by Catch Coat. It's the banger. It's a little crankbait, little square lip. It's gonna go about three to six feet deep, depending on the line, right? So if I go, say, 12 pound line, it's probably gonna get down to like five, six feet deep on a long cast. If I go 15 or 17, it's gonna be stay in that three foot range. So if, you know, depending on where you're fishing and what depth you're gonna to wanna to get to, uh, this square rib bill can be really, really good. And, and I'll tell you another bait that's really good. <clears throat> are these flat sides, okay? And you look at my flat side box right here. I've got a bunch of different ones. Uh, here's some of the ones that we used at um, Knoxville last year. We had a tournament, Bassmaster Elite tournament um, in February. Caught a lot of fish on these little flat sides right here. This time of the year, the red color, crawdad red, is really, really good. You know, it's just, the crawdads do get red, obviously, but it's just something about that bright red color that just triggers those fish. It's an instinct thing. Like a, a bass, you gotta think like a bass. Like a bass has a few seconds to decide, not even a few seconds, really like a split second, to decide if it's gonna eat that bait or react to that bait. And there's something about when that water gets cold, those fish are frigid, they're just kinda getting by, and that red bait comes by, flashing. It's just something about it. There's times, and it's January typically, in early February, where red, if you're not throwing red, you're not getting bit. So red crankbaits are a big deal, as you can see in this box right here. A lot of them that I have. Uh, a couple good ones. Uh, here's a here's a little Fritz side. I caught a lot of fish on that last year. David Fritz designed that one. That bait right there has been through the ringer. Um, it's missing a hook right now, but that little bait right there caught a lot of fish for me last year. And then again, these uh, these little pH lures, the ones that are right here. 
Uh, I caught a lot of fish, at, you know, again, at, at Knoxville on these baits. Uh, I'm going to throw these baits, typically these flat sides, these balsas, these light, these light baits here, typically throwing those on like a seven foot medium rod. I'm gonna, I like it on a on lighter line, 10 pound line to 12 max, and mostly 10. I'm going to throw 10 pretty much all the time because 10, two reasons. 10 throws good, throws far. Those baits are not the easiest to throw. So 10 gets a little farther out there and gets a little deeper, a little quicker. Okay. And it's just, uh, it just, it just action. It's more subtle. It's just, it's just a better action to that bait, that 10. So if you can get away with 10, I would throw 10. If you have to go to 12, 12 is kind of the max. Do not rig up, do not rig up these baits right here on 15 or 17 pound line. You just will not hardly get bit on them. So, uh, those are good. Those are good. And again, the little, little square bills are good as well. Uh, the square bills, you can get away a little heavier line. You know, I'm typically going to throw these on, tw on 12 to 15, but I'm going to fish these shallower, right? If it's super cold, I'm going to get these, these uh, flat sides down a little bit deeper. If it's a warming trend in January, if you're in a part of the country where it's, a, it's on the warmer side right now, these square bills up shallow on some flatter banks with rock can be, can be deadly right there. All right, so the second bait that I like to throw uh, around the rocks is a jig. This one right here is a black and blue. It's a little thick jig by Guggen Squad. Again, you've seen me throw a lot of these lures the last year and a half, two years now. Uh, the jig's awesome. Guys, hand tied skirt, good hook, good weed guard. It's just, it's really done right. Uh, I know Justin had a lot to do with this jig, so good job, man, on that. That was a, that was a big deal, but I throw that jig a lot. And typically, and you know, unless it's really muddy, but I'm typically throwing my natural colors uh, this time of the year, your, your browns, your green pumpkins, stuff like that. And I'm gonna rig them up with a, with, a, with a jig trailer accordingly. Put a little orange in your skirt. Put a little orange on your trailer. Um, in the summertime or spring, I put a little bit more chartreuse in it. But in the winter when it's cold, that orange, which is kind of that red, right? That orangey red thing kind of just triggers those fish to bite. So, uh, you know, the, the half ounce, I, I like a little bit heavier jig. It just gets down there. You're not going to get as many bites, but some of the bigger fish, they're opportunists, right? Those back, those bigger bass are laying down there. They're like, okay, it's cold. They're not real comfortable. They're not going to want to chase around. They're not going to want to expel a lot of energy. So they're going to take the easy meal on a big old jig like this just kind of slow rolling it down the rocks and just kind of working it down the banks, uh, flipping it in cover, will get a big bite. It really will, especially on those sunny days, okay? It's a big, big deal. That jig right there is pretty awesome. Hey guys, before we get too far into this video, I wanna say a huge shout out right now to Decked. Decked and Lear Caps. Uh, th they've been sponsoring these videos. We've been doing these tip videos now uh, since last year. And so this video is presented by Decked. And uh, Decked is the in-truck storage system that I have. I've been having it in the back of my trucks now for uh, about seven or eight years. And it's great. You've got the drawers here. You can put all your tackle. You can put all your tackle in here. Keep everything all organized throughout the year. Come hunting season, I can take all this out, put guns in it. Um, I don't play a lot of golf, but if I did, I could put golf clubs in there. So the deck system is pretty cool, guys. It'll fit just about every truck out there. All you gotta do is go to their website, check out what you know, what kind of truck you have, type in the, the model, the make, the year, and it will it will recommend a certain model number of deck systems. So uh, it's easy to install. You can do it yourself, or you can have a you know authorized dealership do it for you. And again, the Lear Caps, awesome guys, uh, awesome stuff here. Keeps everything good, safe, and secure. This is really the ultimate setup for me. I can keep everything safe and secure with the Lear. And of course, everything's safe and secure with my deck system here. And the best part about this deck system, which is great, and there's other storage, in-truck storage systems out there, they're made out of wood. And the problem with the wood ones is they get dirty. You can't spray water in there. You spray water, then the wood's gonna swell up. It just ruins the entire thing. This is a composite material. You put 2,000 pounds of payload on top of the deck system, and uh, I can literally take a water hose, which I've done plenty of times. You take everything out, spray it, the whole truck out, soap and everything in the back of your truck keeps everything good and uh, and dry so it's it's a really cool system so check out the link uh, in the description and a huge shout out again to decked for uh, making a really cool product and uh, check it out so let's get back let's talk about the third best bait for january let me give a little shout out to my boy right there look at look at look at old matt look at that matt matt matt, matt looks a little stiff in that photo he looks a little stiff in that photo bud but you did make a good little lure so this is uh, a great little bait for January, guys. That is Pulse Fish. It's a it's an underspin. Okay, I fished um, I fished this one last year. Matt gave me one last year, and I caught fish on it, which was hilarious. And um, I did not get any more from him. The hook rusted. And I asked him for more. He did not give me any more. 
but now he did. I do have a box now. So uh, thank you, Matt, for sending these to me. But look, this is a good one, the fish head spin. It's kind of the original uh, underspin on the block, but there's a lot of them out there. But I, I will say this one's nice. It's got a good hook in it. And, and I like this bait here. This is, a, this is a little quarter ounce, but they make them in various sizes. I'm gonna rig this up on 10 pound line, fluorocarbon. And I'm, this is when I'm fishing out deep. I'm not doing this around the rocks. I'm not doing this around, you know, any of that shallow stuff. This is out on the creek channels. This is out in the drains. This is out on, on deeper stuff points. Uh, stuff, stuff that I see fish on the graph. I idle around, I start to see some bait, for example. This time of year, we'll look for bait. Like, you know, I, I, I would say that bait, finding bait is the number one thing, right? If you find schools of bait on your graph, I take the Garmin and I idle around different channels in the ditches and try to find where the bait is. And a couple ways to find bait is obviously with the depth finder, but number two, you can find it by looking for birds. You can find it by looking for seagulls. You can find it by finding loons. A lot of, a lot of these lakes have loons on them. And if you see a lot of loons or seagulls in an area or egrets, uh, there's probably bait around. So, you, you know, th those areas right there are going to be really good. If you, you know, this time of the year, it's not like the whole lake's going to be great. It's going to be like there's couple creeks that are have that have some active fish in them and a couple places in the main lake that's going to have some some active fish so it's just a matter of really finding those hot areas and a lot of times that has to do with finding the bait again so get out there look for the bait and uh and what i do with this little underspin 10 pound line i'm going to throw it out there i'm going to sink down to the depth those fish are at if they're suspended i'm going to get it down just slightly above them so if they're in 20 foot of water, 25 foot of water, I'm gonna get it down just slightly above them. Or if they're on the bottom, a lot of times those fish will lay on the bottom of those ditches. I'm gonna let it sink all the way to the bottom and just reel it real slow or lift it up and let it flutter back down to the bottom. And that blade spinning, it's just a real, not a lot of action, right? This thing's not doing a whole lot in the water, but that blade spinning, give it a little flash, just triggers those fish. And uh, that's a really, really deadly way of catching uh, fish, you know, this time of the year in January. All right, another one here kind of in the same underspin family is gonna be a little swim bait. And you're gonna to wanna, to, let's pull one out of here. Let's get, let's get one of these saucy swimmers. I've got saucy swimmers in here. I have some Kitex in here. I have a whole bunch of different, different ones in this box, but let's take this one right here. Okay, it's a perfect size little 3.8. And I'm gonna rig this up on a little jig head. I'm gonna show you a little trick though. It's gonna help you out a ton. You know, obviously you're gonna pick the right head for the right depth. If I'm fishing shallow, 10, 15 feet deep, you know, your half ounce sizes are probably really, really good. Anything over say 15 or 20, you're gonna to wanna to get your half ounces to three quarter ounce, okay? Uh, you're gonna to wanna to step it up a little bit. So let's, let's take, um, take this one right here. Here's a nice little head. I'll show you a little trick that you can do, and it's how to rig this thing, okay? Because the biggest problem that I that I have with these swim baits sometimes is you go to cast, and you, you, know, like you either see a fish on the panoptics or something's going on, a fish breaks or whatever, and you go like, oh, there, and then you cast, and then the thing slides down the hook. It's like the worst thing ever. Like you see it in the air going, and then you can tell that it's like slid down your hook. Or even worse than that is it lands in the water, you don't know it slid down, you slow roll it all the way back to the like a two minute cast, and you pull it up out of the water and the thing slid down the hook. And it's like, dang it, it's just like wasted two minutes. So in tournaments, that's a big deal. So here's what I'm gonna do. When I rig a swim bait, this is a little trick for you. So this, this, is, a, this, is, a, this is a big thank you for watching the video here. I'm gonna rig that up, I'm gonna push that on, I'm gonna come out dead center. See this right here, this little, that little tooth right there, that little bait keeper, that little peg? That's what holds the bait on. Most people would then just continue to push that up there. Just push it straight up and it would be rigged on. The problem is when you just push it straight on, you've tore a channel inside of that bait a little bit. So it'll hold for a little while, but after a few minutes of casting or a few fish, it's gonna, that's gonna be your weak point. So here's what I do, guys. I get it right up to that point. I turn, turn the bait, okay? I'm 90 degrees to where I want that, okay? I'm now gonna push it up, okay? It's sideways. Now I'm gonna come back to center, okay? Look at that. So now, what I did is again, I went in almost to the hook or to the little uh, bait keeper, twist it 90 degrees, push it all the way on, which tore a channel, but it tore 90 degrees to it, then bring it back center. So now I'm locked into a fresh piece of plastic 
with no channel in front of that where that where that barb is. So that holds that thing on there like a champ. You get you do that, guys. You're gonna you're gonna no, number one. You're gonna you're gonna catch more fish because you're not gonna have bait sliding down, and you're not gonna go through as many baits. So that right there will help a ton. And uh, you can thank me later on that one. But anyways, that's my little swim bait tip. Again, with this 10 pound line, you know, seven foot, seven and a half foot rod, light action, kind of the same thing. You're gonna, we're gonna fish it in the same places as you would this underspin. So these are my two deep water baits um, in January, for sure. That's, that's, my, that's my one, two punch right there. All right, last tip right here. We're going back shallow, by the way. I should have worked this one in on the crankbait side, but lipless crankbait. Lipless crankbait uh, is a killer in cold water. Um, two reasons a fish eat a lipless crankbait. One, they eat a lipless crankbait because they're hungry and they see a bait go by and they're actively feeding. That's number one. Number two, they eat a lipless crankbait because it's a reaction strike. It's a reaction. Like they're not wanting to eat anything. They're laying there and this thing comes by at 100 miles an hour by their face. Close to, their, close to their little area, and they have to just react to it. It's like a cat bouncing on a ball. So it's like you're catching fish, but they're not wanting to eat. They're not hungry. They're literally just chilling. And uh, I catch them on lipless crankbaits on flats this time of the year. Um, you know, you're not gonna throw this out in deep water. This is a bait you're gonna fish, say, seven foot or less on flats. If you're on a lake that has a little bit of grass, maybe just a little stubble coming up, maybe it's been a little on the warm side and there's grass popping up, lipless crankbait can be good. A big mud flat on a warm day uh, with a little channel or ditch in it, it, it can be good. But, um, but yeah, big flats, big open areas, you know, Texas, Oklahoma, you know, Florida, of course, you know, any of those big flats. I'm not gonna throw this on a big deep reservoir, okay? I might go in the back of a creek if there's bait around, again, look for that bait. There's just something about that noise and it's that one knocker. Then at this time of the year, I throw a lot of one knockers. That's a, that's a booyah right there, one knocker. Um, I've got some other ones here. That's a, that's a strike king. And that one's got a lot more rattles in it. It's, 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 it's not a one knocker. So again, one knockers is typically what I look for uh, on a lipless crankbait bite. Now line, here, here's something that I've learned over the years. I've caught a lot of fish, by the way. My very first tournament I ever won, FLW, uh, back in 2000. Well, the Pascal River in February, super, super cold, uh, made a long run over to Mobile Bay, and I won the tournament on a lipless crankbait. I won it on, on uh, a little Yozuri, just like that, actually. And those fish were feeding on the, those things like crazy. And I, and I caught them, and I caught them on 15 pound line with a seven foot, three inch rod, 15 pound line. And, um, and I won the tournament and I, and I thought, okay, good. So I come back to Florida and, and I'm, you know, of course, fish lipless crankbaits here all the time. And over the years, I've found that 15 pound line, for whatever reason, 15 pound line is like the best line for me. It gets the bait down to the right depth. It, the vibration is the perfect little frequency and all that stuff. If you put 17 on, you dampen the vibration a little bit. You put 20 on, you dampen it a lot and the bait's not gonna go as deep. If you put 12 on, it's kind of going too deep. It's not the same. So 15, I'm just telling you guys, if you're gonna rig up a rod, you have a rod in your, in your garage, you're like, okay, this is gonna be my lipless crankbait rod. Put 15 pound fluorocarbon on, on like a seven foot, seven three rod, and, and go to town. That, I'm just telling you, that is like the best line setup ever for a lipless crankbait. And again, in January, you're gonna wanna throw your reds. Um, I'm gonna stay away from my shad colors, but one knocker is red. That's the deal. So, so guys, that is it. Now we haven't forgot. We're going to be giving away those boxes to the winners. So we're going to be announcing those, but thank you so much for hanging out with me uh, today. Drop again, comments down below. Let me know some of your favorite baits and techniques for this time of the year. And uh, if your lakes are frozen over and you're all snowed in, I am so sorry. I love you. Come down to Florida and visit. So let's announce the winners now. First winner is Branson. Risco. Thank you so much for dropping that comment down below. And uh, you're going to win a mystery tackle box. And also Ken Kaufman, second winner. Eric Coker is the third winner. And Zach York is the fourth winner. So again, thank you so much for all the support, guys. And we will see you later and uh, getting ready for the tour season. We've got a couple other videos coming your way. So guys, that's it. Thank you so much for all the support. We'll see you. Bam!